Syria strongly condemned the wave of explosions that hit brotherly Iraq yesterday. And terrorism once again hits hospitals and schools, killing dozens of victims and wounding others in Aleppo. The Syrian Arab army chases terrorists at their hideouts and a large amounts of weapons confiscated. And the Lebanese terrorist Mohammed Hussein Faris admits smuggling weapons, journalists and terrorists into Syria. Good afternoon. The foreign ministry in the Syrian Arab Republic strongly condemned the series of explosions that hit several areas in brotherly Iraq yesterday, causing the death of 100 people in terrorist attacks that targeted all installations, military and commercial institutions. The ministry asserted in its statement that such attacks were aimed at disrupting security and stability and killing innocent Iraqis without any discrimination. These attacks would never break the solid will of the Iraqi people to develop their country and preserve its stability. The ministry gave warm condolences to the Iraqi people and expressed full solidarity and sympathy with the families of the victims and wished the wounded victims speedy recovery. An official source in Aleppo governorate asserted that the explosion before Al Hayat Hospital in the quarter of the municipal stadium in Aleppo led to the death of 30 citizens, including women, children, and two security policemen, and the wounding of 64 others. The explosion was caused by a booby trapped medium sized vehicle carrying more than one ton of highly explosive materials. The explosion caused a hole six meters deep. The damage extended to 50 meters and hit the buildings of two hospitals, a school, and other buildings nearby. Another explosion happened at the same time near another school in the Martyrs' quarters. It was caused by a booby-trapped vehicle carrying 500 kilograms of explosives. It led to the death of three citizens, including a 10-year-old girl and the wounding of six others. Once again, terrorism hits the city of Aleppo, and once again, many innocent people are killed for having no fault but for rejecting that Wahhabi thinking and those who entered to tear off the Syrian mosaic. May God curse them. Is that freedom? Here we have elderly women who were killed. Is that freedom? There are bodies on the ground. Women, women who were disabled. The attack targeted three hospitals, including a school for a displaced causing great destruction. I ask Hamad, Erdogan, and Al Saud, whom are you targeting? This is Aleppo, which is steadfast, and it will remain steadfast. It will rid itself from all the terrorists that were sent from all parts of the world. Targeting that place indicates how criminal the mind which masters uh, the attack is. For detonating a car bomb with 1,000 kilograms of explosives, in Al Malab neighborhood near Al Hayat Hospital, the central hospital, and Al Nusur Zahabiya school, not far from the Global Ball Square, killing and wounding tens of thousands of innocent people, apart from leaving heavy damages in both hospitals, the school, as well as the nearby buildings. They blew off my son by the blast. Three car bombs, the Israelis and the Americans. God cursed them. God cursed them. Forever I will curse them. My son was playing in the street. They blew him off using three car bombs. The screams go off high, rejecting terrorism and believing in the strength of the Syrian Arab army and its ability to fight terrorism and its supporters and financiers of all sheikhs and those who lead them. The determination of the Syrian people, which is much stronger than the dark thinking of terrorism, will no doubt triumph eventually. 
Following clashes between the Syrian armed forces and the terrorist groups in al neighborhood in Damascus, which resulted in the death of a number of terrorists, and the armed forces broke into a number of terrorists' hideouts. They found stolen medical equipment used for the terrorists to treat them, in addition to a factory for manufacturing explosive devices and military uniforms. After following up information given by the people, a unit of our armed forces stormed several hideouts of terrorists in the quarter of Jurat al-Shayyah and Homs. The clash led to heavy casualties among the terrorists, in addition to destruction of two storehouses full of ammunition that they used in their attacks and sabotage crimes. In al aqsair farms on Al-Adra Highway, in the area of Burqat Hamze, a unit of our armed forces carried out a large operation that led to the death of a large number of terrorists, including Khalid Ahmad Omar, Muhammad Yusuf Omar, and Hussein Shahda Omar. Our armed forces also clashed with the terrorist group in Al Aqsar countryside, killing many terrorists, including Wael Abdul Halim Zakaria, Abdul Halim Zakaria, Muhammad Abdul Rahim Qastarawi, and Ali Muhammad Qastarawi. In Hama, authorities stormed a terrorist hideout in Tal Qartal, in the southern side of the governorate, and arrested several terrorists with their weapons, in cooperation with the people in that area. A source in the governorate said that the weapons confiscated included machine guns and various pistols of various calibers with their ammunition. In Dara, authorities carried out an operation in Al Ahraq town, killing a number of terrorists and destroying two of their cars, in addition to confiscating various types of weapons. An official source said that the confiscated weapons included 32 anti tank mines and their detonators, three Israeli made LAO launchers with their shells, 11 RBGs, and 10 batteries used for remote detonation, in addition to 2,117 bullets and the weapons and ammunition. On the other hand, military engineering units dismantled the 200 kilogram explosive device that was planted by terrorists on Jamli Nafa Main Street in Dara countryside. An official source said that the bodies of Khalil Hussein Muhammad Salim Saraj Ahmad were identified among the dead in the operation. Authorities destroyed hideouts of ter armed terrorist groups in the village of Serja and their symbol in a Zawiya mountain in Idlib. A source at the governorate said that these hideouts were used by the terrorists to torture and kill civilians. The attack resulted in the death of tens of terrorists and the injury of many others. Among the terrorists who were killed were Deep Yusuf Zriq and Musa Habib Abu Habib. 35 persons from Damascus and its countryside and 7 persons from Homs who were involved in recent events in Syria but did not commit murder were released after pledging not to carry arms or take part in any sabotaging acts in the future. They pledged not to they pledged not to return to the acts they had previously committed. A number of the released said that their release signals a new beginning for them to move on with their lives and take part in building the society. The French surgeon Jacques Pierre, one of the founders of the organization of Doctors Without Borders who treated mercenary terrorists in Aleppo, said that some of those fighters were trying to turn Syria into a religious state, believing that they were fighting a holy war. After returning from Syria, where he stayed for a fortnight and worked recently and secretly in a hospital in Aleppo. He said that what he saw was different from the situation in Homs and Idlib last year. Nearly 60% of those he treated this time came from abroad and belonged to Al-Qaeda organization. The Spanish paper El Mondo asserted that the suicide terrorist who appeared in a video driving a lorry and exploding it in Idlib was a Spanish citizen of a Moroccan origin who worked as a taxi driver. The Spanish security forces identified the person who is called the Northern Abu Musab. He is from Septa. He is also known as Rashid Hussein Muhammad. He was identified from traces of a wound in his arm. The day in which he appeared in the video was the same day when his family in Septa was contacted from Syria to be told of his death. The Lebanese criminal terrorist Muhammad Hussein Faris admitted that he smuggled weapons, journalists, and armed terrorists into Syria. He also carried out terrorist acts against Syrian citizens. The Lebanese criminal terrorist Mahmoud Hussein Faris was born in Arsal in 1985. He lived in the village of Jusiyi. 
The leader of the largest terrorist group in that village, Ahmed Amun, asked him to smuggle weapons into Syria together with others of the Syrian nationality. They used to take the weapons from someone called Khalid Lahjera and smuggle them through illegal crossing points. That person gave them 35,000 pounds for each smuggled load. They also smuggled journalists and armed fighters from several nationalities, as they were instructed not to return from the crossing point through which they infiltrated into Syria. They smuggled materials were given to someone called Bilal al-Jarban from Luqsir. He contacted them and they went to him and found that he had a wounded journalist, smuggled him and called the doctor to treat him. They smuggled nearly six armed terrorists to the school of Jussi, which contained 250 armed people. One morning, the leader of the terrorist group ordered them to attack the village of Lhsabiyi, so they besieged it and waged the attack. They opened fire in order to force people there to surrender or to leave the area. A group of them stood on subsidiary highway in order to kill anyone who went in or out of that village. Next day, the number of armed terrorists stormed the houses to steal their contents. They counted the victims and found 14 dead people, including women, children and young people. More details about Syria and the region on our website www.syrianline.sy.